Hi, I'm Brady Forrest with O'Reilly Media. Uh, I'm here today with Matt Cutts. Matt is the head of the web spam team at Google and is a very long time employee there. And I've known Matt from the search world for quite a while. Yeah. Hey, Matt. How's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. Right on. Uh, so, I mean, you do a lot of things with Google. You're kind of the voice for Google in a lot of in a lot of yeah. search matters. Yeah. And you wanted to talk about rel equals author today? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a pretty cool thing. Basically, uh, we just announced it recently. And if you think about it, the web is sort of this anonymous place where anyone can show up, leave a comment. You don't really know who wrote a blog post, and that's that's not the way the web should be. So what rel equals author is, is a really nice, clean, completely standard HTML5 way to sort of mark up a page and say, you know, here's a blog post I do on MacCuts.com or whatever, and I can make my, you know, by MacCuts byline point to an author page. And I give it the rel equals author attribute. And then Google can sort of start to tie together all this content. Now, the first version is only for on the same site. So NewYorkTimes.com, CNET.com is using this to point to their you know, reporter or journalist pages. Um, but over time, you can imagine making this richer and, and linking it with other sites or linking it across different domains. And what's really great about it is if this starts to take off, then imagine you've done a guest blog post, right? Mm -hmm. And we already know Brady's got great author rank. Like, he's a reputable guy. But even if that new guest blog post doesn't have any links yet, Maybe down the road we could say, ah, oh, but this is Brady. We already know he's a good guy. So maybe, you know, kind of give you a few links or, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of page rank in that author rank. So how does this feed into the overall kind of like people rank? There? Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Google's been working a lot more on social search, trying to make things, you know, more transparent. So we sort of annotate in the search results. This particular change lets people start to do the markup. So they can mm -hmm. start to you know, annotate the web a little bit. And then we'll be working on the ranking changes to see, OK, given the signal, what traction is it getting? How can we use it in our ranking? And then over time, we'd like to make it where you can actually see a picture of the person's name, you know, their, their photo or avatar, and who did this. And, and then if you want to, maybe click and get more information. What else has this person written? Now, will you ever see this extending across to like YouTube videos and other types of content? So it's not just? I, I definitely think that would be great. And in fact, one of the very first things that happened as soon as people introduced it is, hey, can I make this with HTTP headers? Or you know, uh -huh. what are the different yeah. ways to do it? And that way, you could say, maybe I'm the author of this picture, you know, even though there's no way to put metadata in a picture. Now, that's a little bit down the road. So we'll have to see what sort of uptake we get. But it's pretty exciting. There's the guys that worked on Rel Equal Author are like three or four doors down. Mm -hmm. So they're really happy to get this out. And now they can start to figure out, how do we improve the search rankings actually knowing who's writing things on the web? Now, are you guys working with anybody else on this? Like, is uh, Bing going to support this, Yahoo? There was also schema.org, which has also come out around the same time. And that's got a Bing and Yahoo behind it as well. Uh, this particular thing, it's using pre-existing stuff. So rel equals author has actually been around for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So what we're essentially saying is, if you do annotate your pages like that, it's much more likely that Google will start to use that information, start to incorporate it into, it into its rankings, try to figure out you know, who are the individual people. It's, it's going to be fun. Cool. Are you using it yet on Mac Cuts? Uh, yes, I have annotated my page. So if you go to my blog, uh, you can click on Buy My Cuts, and you can see it goes to. Uh, you can look at the all the markup, and and they. Uh, I'm usually the guinea pig for a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So whenever you mark someone as a spam result, and you need a screenshot of a spam result, they use my blog, and that sort of thing. So even though I'm not spam. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, it would be ideal, like if I could tie this to my Twitter account or my right. Facebook account and make those my like pages of record. If yeah. I choose, if I chose, and not because I have BradyForce.com, but not everybody has their like personal domain. Yeah. You want it to be easy, and and so the challenge is at the same time you want it to also be trusted. Like you don't want to have fake Barack Obama. And so mm -hmm. one of the things they're doing is it requires, uh, you know, down the road if you allow across different domains, you'll have to have like. You can link to whitehouse.gov, but unless whitehouse.gov links back to you, yep. then it hasn't been authenticated. So you need those sort of bi-directional links. So it's still early days along you know, getting those links across sites. And we'll have to figure out you know, where can you put a link on Twitter to prove that it's really you. So there's some, mm -hmm. there's some issues to be worked out. So it, it might make sense to start with something trusted where you know. Like I can imagine a Google profile where you can change the, the annotation of the links or something like that. But over time, I mean, people. In my opinion, people want to be where they want to be on the web, and, and people should support that. So it'll be interesting to see how this affects kind of the social graph, if it's able to export it out from Twitter and Facebook and put it on the open web. 
Yeah. Do you picture being able to put up a relationship? Like, I mean, the, right, right. That um, already exists, but well, and a lot of the you know the WordPress guys, for example, are great because they've done you know XFN and all these kinds mm -hmm. of standards. And uh, what I think is pretty interesting is if you use rel equals author and then rel equals me, then you can start to think about tying all this stuff together. And I, you know, I'm on Twitter. I've done thirteen thousand tweets. So if there's some way to to you know combine those over time, and it, it may take a little while before we figure out what's the right exact interface. How do you make it easy? Uh, so there's something called the Social Graph API where mm -hmm. you can type in, okay, here's a URL. What else is linked in that social space via very, uh, various links? So you know you want it to be trusted, but you also want to be transparent, so people understand why is this you know page linked with that page. So I think it's it's probably better to go a little bit slow and be a little careful so that people aren't you know, like really nervous about it. Um, but it definitely makes sense to me that you'd want to be able to have people annotate as much of the web as possible. Yeah. So you and I are both kind of like fitness gadget people. Yeah. And uh, so what's what's that on your wrist? This guy. This is a Nike Plus sports band. It's actually pretty neat. I've I've got a a little Nike foot pod in here. And so as you're running, this guy is keeping track of every step you take. And so it knows your cadence, and it can take a rough guess about how far you've run. And the neat thing is, then you just take this guy, and you can plug him right in to a USB port, and then it'll upload it to the web. And you can, you know, take those guys. You can run against other people. You can see are you doing better and faster, and those kinds of things. So it's getting now where you can have quantified self on your running. You can have, you know, a Fitbit. You can have a Nike. You can have a GPS. If you run with your cell phone, you'll be able to see what your track was. And yeah, see, I want that cool. pedometer on my cell phone, like I know. tie into the cell phone, I know. and then, you know, maybe have specific sensors that yeah. maybe use Android at home or Zigbee or something like that that yeah. actually like tie it all in together. And the accelerometers of the phone are a little, they're, they're not set from phone to phone. Right. And that's and like a problem researchers have. And you don't want to drain your battery on your, on your phone. Mm -hmm. But it's getting really close. Like, uh, and some Android phones with my tracks can talk to some devices. And it's yeah. just like there's that thin thread. But over time, especially at Google I.O., they announced the Android Developer Kit. So you can start to do Arduino and all these other kinds of hacking. And if you can get, like, all kinds of cool devices interfacing where it's just like your pedometer can talk to your GPS and all that stuff, or your bike computer. Well, and as we were talking, the uh, you know Google's working with Ford with their predictions API yeah. to work on fuel consumption. Mm -hmm. Like I'd love to be able to stream my data up to the predictions API mm -hmm. and get feedback like, oh, you're about to like say something inappropriate. <laughs> uh, it's time to take your medication, or you know maybe maybe you haven't had water in a while. Whatever your yeah. like your body is reacting and. You should you should really think about doing this right now. Yeah, you're about to run late on this meeting. You know, a little blip or something, or even the notion that like you're about to say something stupid, so your 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 phone starts vibrating with an SOS pattern. You know, that's like, oh, that's my ringtone that lets me silently know I need to back out of the room because something big is going down. Cool. Well, thank you very yeah, much, Matt. Absolutely. Always good to see you. Yeah.